Okay, so the last skill for histograms is forming a frequency polygon. This is a super rare thing that they might ask, but they might ask it. So just recall from GCSE that a frequency polygon can be drawn by using the midpoint of each interval. And this corresponds to the midpoint of the top of each bar in a histogram, because clearly these are the intervals that we've got here. So if you were going to be asked to draw a frequency polygon for this one that we've got, all you would do is you would mark the midpoints of the bits that we've got. So I've got a midpoint up here. Don't forget that this one still has a midpoint down here. We did this question earlier on. Um, even though there's zero frequency there, we don't want to just skip it out. We do want to make sure that we come down to it. I'll mark the midpoint of this one, this one, this one, and this one, and for a frequency polygon, you just join them together using a straight line. So I'm going to join this to this, this to this one, this here, this like this, and then this up across like this. So you can form frequency polygons. It's not something I see com um, commonly asked, but it's just uh, worth remembering that skill from GCSE. So you should now be able to do exercise 3D plus some of these extra questions that I've got below. And then you can also try some of the questions from exercise 3E because there is no new content. It is just comparing data distributions. Remember though, when you do a data distribution comparison, you should compare two measures. One of them should be about a measure of location. Usually the median or the mean is a good one to compare. You should compare a, media, a, a measure of location, of spread, sorry, which is something either like the range or the interquartile range. And just make sure that you talk about the context of the question to get all of those marks. So I'm just going to put the extra questions that I've got here so that you can pause the video and you can try these ones yourself. And I'll also put the answers at the end. So this is question one for the extra questions. Here is question two. Question three, question four, question five, question six. And question seven. Here are also the answers for questions one, two, and three. And for four, five, six, and seven. Now, if you do want a PDF of this so that you don't have to keep pausing the video, if you go to my About section and you go to the Bison Maths Google Drive, you will find a PDF of Chapter 3, Representations of Data, and you'll be able to access all of these questions and the slides that I use in my videos. I'm going to finish this chapter off by doing three exam questions so you can see how it all gets pulled together. Okay.